Hello, welcome to another video. So in this video, I want to talk about uh, what we call uh, how to increase RPM, that means revolutions per minute of your bowling ball by via a scientific method or using a scientific approach. Like we look at it through the science of how to increase uh, revolutions per minute or in other words, the scientific name for it will be angular velocity. Right, because uh, so let's define what's angular velocity. So this is uh the if you Google angular velocity, this is the first thing that should pop up. It's a rate of change of the angular position of a rotating body. So let's say if we have uh, let's me bring up a picture of the ball. Right, let's say if we have a picture of yeah, try again. Let's say we have a picture of a ball. So if uh, the rate of change of the angular portion is how is uh, the measure of angular velocity, right? Sure. So revolutions per minute, RPM, is also an acronym for revolutions per minute. That means how many revolutions. That means uh, how many turns, how many revolutions the ball will turn per minute. So it's just another way of uh, talking about angular velocity anyway. So for the purpose of this video, I'll refer to RPM as angular velocity for now because there's a scientific name for it. So what's the formula for angular velocity? Which is, uh, this is a symbol, angular velocity is omega. This is the simple formula that you can find from Googling as well. So omega is equals to rate of change in uh, theta, which is a rate of change in angular rotation. That means how many degrees your circular body or your ball rotates divided by the rate of change in time that means how fast the change occurs so that's simple enough right resize this let's uh, make the formula bigger and let's explain it this way so this is the simple formula for angular velocity that means how fast a body a circular body rotates or how fast a body rotates is equals to the rate of change of uh, the angular rotation over the rate of change of time so how do you increase the ang so how do you increase uh, the ref rate of a ball that means uh, if we are able to let's see if i can draw so if we are able to increase this if we can increase this, that means increase the, the change in angular rotation. We also increase our angular velocity, right? Because by making the numerator bigger, so this is the numerator, this is the denominator. So by making the numerator larger, your end product, that means your angular velocity here, should increase, will increase as well, right? Because this is basic math. Or other than that, so let's have, uh, let's remove this. Or we could do the reverse. We could make this value smaller, right? So the rate of change in time, we can make the denominator smaller. So if we make this rate of change in time smaller, it also makes this larger, right? Because you have a smaller change in t, smaller change in t, then you, this is the same, so this divided by a smaller number will equal to a bigger number in the angular velocity side. So by decreasing this, you can also increase this. So that is, uh, in summary, the very simple, uh, simple explanation on how to increase ref rate. But how does how do the pros do it? Okay, let's take a look at a famous pro bowler, EJ Tackett. Let's see how he increases his ref rate. So, for EJ Tackett, obviously he has a very quick release in uh, that his flick of his wrist is very quick. So that that also corresponds to the very small that corresponds to this very small change in T. So the the faster you flick your wrist during the release, the fast the faster you release your ball, the smaller the change in time and higher your angular velocity. So that is part of it. And also, there's a technique where top bowlers like EJ Hackett, how they increase their... So let's reverse this. There's also another way on how they increase this value. How they increase the change in angular rotation. So let's take a look. Change in 
angular rotation okay so this is slow motion let's see whether we can further slow this down okay let's further slow this down yep so here you can see here you can see that it's pretty blur because this is not a high-speed camera so you can't really capture uh, the exact th thing that he's doing here but he breaks his wrist so in other words if I show you my wrist here so he goes from this position and he breaks his wrist during the release so what it does is it changes the change in angular rotation so it increases the change in angular rotation for example do we have a picture of a ball like for example let's say your uh, okay let's clear this so for example let's say your uh, fingers originally travel from this part to this part of the ball during release correct so for ej tacket what he's doing is that his fingers will travel from this part let's say it's the same part and because it breaks his wrist during the release his fingers stay in the in the finger hole slightly longer and it leaves the finger so the finger holes at here so a top bowler like EJ Hacker they increase the rate of change in the the angle that means they increase how much they rotate the ball from the bottom to the top by using this technique that means they break their wrist during release so during when they're holding the ball is cupped before the release and during the part of the release they flick so they do a very quick flick and by flicking it the fingers here they stay in the ball slightly longer and it gives the result of something like this something like the blue line compared with what a normal release would be for uh, let's say uh, the red line is what a normal release would look like so this is how you get this uh, increase in the change in angular rotation right so you increase by angular rotation by using a technique such as uh, breaking the wrist during release and that is how a top bowler like EJ Hacker increases the ref rate and the other so this one we have seen it okay so the other one it's uh, how about let's take a look at two handers so two handers are famous for having high ref rates right so how does the two hander get that higher ref rate as well so let's take a look at slow motion do we have slow motion this is uh, Jesper Swenson the famous two hander professional as well and you can see that first and foremost his fingers are at the bottom of the ball during release so his fingers are at the bottom so if we refer to our picture we have a picture of a ball here so let's mark it out so his fingers are at the bottom of the ball so somewhere around here and then let's take a look at during release okay so you can see how fast it, he goes through the ball how fast is his wrist release go through the release so there is uh, the, the very small change in delta t there and can we see when his fingers leave the ball it's about here. That's so fast. It's about here. So if we refer to our picture of the ball again, for Jesper, for two handle like Jesper Swenson, his fingers release roughly around here, slightly above the equator line of the ball. So his fingers travel from here all the way to here. So this is also a very large delta t uh, change in change in theta very large change in theta so a very large change in the angle and he completes his release at a very quick speed so also so what a uh, two-hander does is uh, or maybe a top two-hander like Jesper Swenson does is that okay let me go to the picture here not only do they have a very high change in theta that means a very high change in angular rotation they also have uh, okay this is in green. this is in green so not only do they have a very high change in 
delta theta, that means a very high change in angular rotation. They also have a very quick release, a very quick release of the wrist. That means they have a very small change in time. So a very high change in angular rotation number divided by a very small change in time number equals to a very large angular velocity. Right? So that's how you get a very high ref rate by increasing the change in angular rotation by using the brick wrist technique, that means during release, make sure that you keep your wrist muscles here loose. So to explain a little bit on how they do this release is that first and foremost, your fingers still have to be firm, especially for a two-hander. So for a two-hander, we always recommend that the thumb and the fingers stay firm. So to provide resistance on the ball as you're releasing the ball, because if your fingers are limp, the, falls, the ball would just slip off your finger holes uh, and you don't get the resistance you need to lift through the ball to provide the, the power and the ref to get the power and the referee. So your fingers still have to be firm, you still have to tense up your fingers, but your wrist muscles should be relaxed. So if you relax your wrist muscles, you should be able to rotate easily, right? You can flick your wrist up and down easily while still keeping your fingers sort of firm. But if you tense up your wrist muscles, let's say I tense it up here, it, my, my wrist becomes very stiff. Like you can feel a lot of resistance. If you tense up your wrist muscles and you try and rotate and you try and flip your wrist up and down, you'll feel a lot of resistance. Like your wrist travels very slowly. So you gotta keep your wrist muscles relaxed yet keeping your fingers firm. So for a one-hander, obviously your thumb has to be relaxed. But for even for one-hander as well, like EJ Attacker, they have to keep their fingers firm too. So the, all their four fingers, they have to keep it firm so they provide resistance on their finger holes where they release the ball. But yet their thumb is relaxed so they have a quick clean release. And the same thing, their wrist muscles have to be relaxed. So the muscles of the wrist here has to be relaxed so that that's why you can do a flick quickly. So obviously I'm not as talented as either of them so I wouldn't be able to flick my wrist as fast. But yeah, that is the, that's the key to how to, have a, to flick your wrist through the release to have a very quick flick keeping this wrist muscles relaxed okay and uh, that's about it so basically that's it this, this, is a, this is a scientific approach to how to increase ref rate hope uh, that makes it easier for people to understand uh, so in summary that means uh, if you can have a as large a change in angular rotation as possible which means if you have your ball here if you can start your release at the lowest point, as low a point as possible, and leave the ball as, as high a point as possible, so you increase this change in uh, angular rotation. The higher the angular rotation, the higher your ref rate. And also, if we refer to our formula here, also, the lower your change in time, the lower your change in time, the higher your ref rate as well. So the bigger the change in angular rotation, the, that means the more underneath your fingers can be before the release, and the higher your fingers can be after the release, and if you can do your release faster, reducing the change in time, you have a larger angular velocity, and you have a higher ref rate, higher RPM. Because the RPM is just equal to revolutions per minute, which uh, 2 pi theta, that, uh, 2 pi omega, that means uh, 2, pi ang 2 pi radians angular velocity is equal to one full rotation every second, which is 60 revolutions per minute. So that's 60 RPM. So if you can increase that, then it becomes more. So for example, like top bowlers like EJ Tackett uh, probably has around 500 to 600 RPM. And for Jasper Sensor, he has beyond 600 RPM. Okay, and that's it. So thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time.